Hi folks. So this is going to be the first in a series of videos about basic electronics for the electronic technician. I want to slant these toward the technician. So even though there's going to be some brief discussion about electrons and when we get to semiconductors, electrons and holes, they're going to be just that brief discussions just to give you an idea of where we're coming from. Um, I can assure you when I'm working on an old receiver, I'm not thinking about electrons, but we do need to think about things like voltage, current, um, and these are bedrock principles and it's actually where we're going to start. Uh, you really need to get a good grasp of what voltage is, what current is, to build everything else on. So that's where we're going to start. Um, fortunately, when I was going to electronic school, they taught us a very simple way to understand the differences between voltage and current. And that was the water analogy. So we're going to start right there. Okay, so let's say we have a tank of water here. And at the outlet of the tank, at the bottom, we measure 45 PSI. Now, if we add more water to the tank, you'll see that the pressure increases. Pressure, or water pressure, is analogous to voltage in this case. The more voltage you have, or the more water in the tank, the higher the pressure. <clears throat> so, if we have this much water in the tank, it'll push out 85 gallons per minute. In this case, we're discussing flow. And the flow of water in this case is analogous to current. If everything else remains the same in electrical current circuits, and we increase the voltage, or in this case the tank level, we get more flow of water or current. So if we put more water in the tank, you see now we have 120 gallons per minute. This is the easiest way to imagine the differences between voltage and current. Voltage is our pressure. It's also known as electromotive force. And current is our flow. It's a flow of electrons, but we don't really think about the electrons. We just think about the flow of current. In this case, it's compared to the flow of water. And again, the more pressure you have, or EMF, the more current or flow you're going to have. Okay, so I have two meters set up here on the bench. The first meter, the fluke on the left, is reading the output of a DC power supply, which is exactly 10 volts. And I have a resistor in the circuit, and we are measuring 49.6 milliamps flowing through the circuit. So we have 10 volts and 49.6 millivolts. Now, if all things in this circuit stay the same, and I'm gonna put a quick graphic of that circuit up here so you can just see what we have here. It's simply the power supply feeding through a limiting resistor, and we'll talk about this later, and then flowing through the meter, because in order to measure current, we have to make the meter a part of the circuit. We have to break the circuit and insert the meter so all the current flows through the circuit. And indeed, if you were to measure this with an ohm meter, you'd find probably just a few ohms. All the current in the circuit flows through this meter. This meter is across the circuit, and therefore it's reading the output of the power supply. Now any test equipment when connected to a circuit becomes part of the circuit, but the ammeter actually has to be inserted into the circuit. In other words, the circuit must be broken and the meter inserted to complete the circuit. That's how ammeters work. So I'm going to turn the voltage up and as I do you'll see that the current climbs. Okay, so at 24 volts, we have 119 milliamps, and we had 49.7, so if we go to 20, and this is uh, just a knob on this power supply, so it's a little dicey to get it exactly right, we should have twice 49.7. 
Okay, we have 99.3. So let's see where that leaves us here. There's 20, eh, 20 volts. And if you check the math here, you'll see that 49.7 times 2 is 99.4. We got 99.3. Uh, considering the fact that we might be a little low on the voltage. No, that's good enough. I think it demonstrates the point anyway. So, all things being equal, more voltage will equal more current. Now, as I said, I want to tell you a little story from when I was a Greenhorn Tech and how mystified I was at this. And this will give you an idea of why it's so important to understand voltage versus current. I was working for a water utility down in Miami and I was testing out a flow meter. Flow meter is completely dead and it just plugged into a 120 volt outlet. So I pulled the plug out and I stick the fluke in and I see 120 volts. Plug the flow meter in, it's totally dead. Check the power supply of the flow meter, totally dead. Go back to the power cord, totally dead. Can't figure out what's going on. Finally, um, an electrician come by and he determined that the outlet had a high resistance open in it so it wasn't totally open but it had a poor connection that every time it was loaded down by the flow meter would just read zero volts yet when I stuck the fluke in the outlet it read 120 and at the time I couldn't figure out why that should be and now that I've gained more experience I look back and that I realized the error I had made and that is this this meter has an input impedance of 10 mega ohm therefore if I stick this in the outlet it puts virtually no load on the outlet so the outlet would put out the voltage I needed but because of the poor connection making a high resistance open it wouldn't provide any current so as soon as you plug something in it would just load it down and go to zero and this is one of the reasons why it's so important to understand the relationship between voltage and current and the difference because voltage is a force that pushes electrons whereas current is what we use to measure the flow of electrons Okay, so if we hold the voltage constant, but change the resistance in the circuit, you'll see that our current changes, but the voltage will stay the same. Now, this guy right here is a decade resistance box. It's very handy for just dialing up a given resistance. So I have 20 volts, 200 ohms, and I'm putting out roughly 100 milliamps, 99.4. So if I increase our resistance to 300 ohms, you'll see our current drops. Yet if I drop the resistance, you'll see our current actually goes up. So that's 100 ohms, 200 ohms, 300 ohms. So if the voltage stays constant, but the resistance changes, it affects the current. Remember, we're talking about something that flows through a circuit. So if we increase the resistance, less of it can flow. It's kind of like throttling the water valve down. 300 ohms, 400 ohms, current drops even further. 500 ohms, further yet. This is the basis of Ohm's Law. We're going to spend some time talking about Ohm's Law because it's one of those brilliant tools because of its simplicity. That's where its power lies. Some basic math functions, and I'm talking for the most part multiplication and division. We have some squares and square roots, but with today's calculators, that's just a trivial thing. You should be able to download an app on your phone that will do all the math that we need to do in order to help gain an understanding. Ohm's law is 
something that as a technician we become intimately familiar with and in fact I have on my bench in a prominent place an Ohm's Law wheel. I'm not sure if you can focus in on that. I'm just going to zoom in a little so we can see. And that is how important this is. I refer to this for formulas I don't use on a regular basis. Great for figuring out amplifier outputs. Great for figuring out if you have too much current flowing through a resistor. And that's why the little sucker is burning up. It's something we're going to spend some time on. Now, I know a lot of people freak out over math. Believe me, if I can do it, you can do it. And with today's calculators, it's pretty much a non-event. Um, I have to laugh when I was in tech school, a vocational school for electronics. When it came time to teach us math, they came in with a cardboard box and handed everybody the identical calculator. And it was a smart thing to do because if everyone has different calculators, some of the keystrokes or functions may be different. Hewlett Packard was known for this. They had what they called reverse Polish notation to enter um, data into the calculator to get an answer. So if everyone has the same calculator, the teacher just went up on the board and laid out the keystrokes. It was kind of a paint by numbers thing, but it worked really well. So. We're going to spend a little time on that, but I really wanted to, to see what happens in a circuit when you change the resistance. We saw when you raise the voltage and the resistance stays the same, that the current goes up. Lower the voltage, the current goes down. Now, if we hold the voltage constant and change the resistance, you'll see how that affects the current. We're talking about a flow versus a force that pushes that flow. This is, as I said, a bedrock principle and something I really, really need to get across. So basically, just to review what we've talked about, we have voltage. Voltage is a force, a pressure which forces electrons through a circuit. The flow of those electrons are what we call current. And by increasing the voltage, should everything else stay the same in that circuit, your current will go up. And then we introduce the concept of resistance, um, which will, of course, slow the flow of electrons through a circuit. So as your resistance goes up, your current will go down. Um, in a series circuit like this, <clears throat> we're holding the voltage the same. And we're going to talk about series and parallel circuits. And we're going to delve deeply into Ohm's Law in some upcoming episodes. Now, anyone who watches my channel knows I'm, I'm sort of a fan of a short form video. We all have busy lives. And especially when, in, when we're trying to grasp new concepts, I find 15 minutes to a half hour is maximum. When I was studying this subject, 15 minutes was it. I would stop, take a break, walk around, pet the cat, come back to it any more than 15 minutes and I was just passing words in front of my eyes with little or no comprehension so it made more sense so we're gonna keep these short uh, this one's probably gonna be around the 15 minute mark uh, Ohm's law may run a little longer or I may break it up into segments but again these are bedrock principles that we need to get under our belt so as we go along we have a point of reference Okay, folks, so I'm going to sign this off now. And as always, I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. And I'm hoping that this series will be a big part of that. Okay, have a great day.